podido escuchar los seros humillados para cumplir hoy tu voluntad por eso hoy away, but it's always so good to come back home. And um, I'm going to jump right into the Word of God because I know that God has a Word for each and every one of us. How many are ready to receive a Word from God? I am. I'm hungry for God and I'm, I'm hungry for His Word. Amen? So, hey, when we were in Argentina, um, I was actually asked out of the spur of the moment, Pastor Lane asked me to go on the panel. And that was a surprise because it wasn't programmed. So I, w I went on the panel and, you know, all these pastors were asking questions about GROW, about all this information. And at the end of the time of the panel, um, one of the questions was basically, after doing, you know, two days of intensive learning, what would be your, you know, your word of advice or what would be that wisdom that you want to leave to people? What did you take out of this? And so we were each asked to say something. And in that moment, I remembered something that my husband always tells us, and that was kind of a recurring theme during this time in Argentina. And the words that I said was something that I've heard my husband say, something that we've heard Pastor Chris Hodges say, and, and it's this, don't defend what is not working. Don't defend what is not working. And I believe that this is a word from, from God for our church for this year, as we've done away, in, not only in the church, but in our lives, with a lot of things that are just not working. And you hold on to it as if it was religion. You hold on to it as if it's always been that way. But, but true wisdom in this wisdom series, true wisdom is knowing when to let that go. When not to defend something that's not working in our lives. And I want to go into the word of God with this in Proverbs 4.10 to 15 for this message title, Wisdom Way. Say Wisdom Way. We're going to go to Wisdom Way today, okay? So Proverbs 4.10 to 15 says this, listen, my son, accept what I say and the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along a straight path. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not set foot on the path of wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go your way. And I want to go ahead and read it from another version, which I love, the message version. I usually read the Bible in two of these versions, the, the New International Version, and then I'll go ahead and read the message version, and it says it this way. Dear friend, take my advice. Who's going to take advice this morning? Yes. And it's not my advice, it's the Bible's advice. Amen? It's God's advice. It will add years to your life. So turn to your neighbor and say, this will add years to your life. You need to listen up, buddy. Got to tell him, listen up, buddy. Listen to the word of God this morning. I'm writing out clear direction to wisdom way. Where are we going? Wisdom way. I'm drawing a map to righteous road. I don't want you ending up in blind alleys or wasting time making wrong turns. Hold tight to good advice. Don't relax your grip. Guard it well with your, your life is at stake. Don't take wicked bypass. Don't so much as set foot on that road. Stay clear of it. Give it a wide berth. Make a detour and be on your way. Our society is devouring information and knowledge. We, we go ahead and we study everything. We Google everything, right? But we're starving for wisdom, we're starving of knowing actually how to apply. How do we live life, not in theory, but in application? We learn, we read, we download so much stuff. How many of you guys have like hundreds of apps downloaded, right? There's an app for everything. 
There is an app for, for even measuring wall length now, right, you guys? I mean, there is an app for everything. And, and we have an opinion on all subjects because we consider ourselves experts. But we are so lost within the walls of this information maze. And although we want to succeed in life, right? How many want to succeed? We want to succeed. We want to win in life. We want to thrive in our marriage. We want to climb the corporate ladder. But if your story is anything like so many other people's story, as you work your way through this labyrinth, journey across new terrain, although we set out to succeed, even though we have that winning mentality and we want to go out and we want to you know, build up good children, you plan for happily ever after. Yet life doesn't always go as planned. Things don't always turn out good. Sometimes, sometimes things go terribly wrong in life. And we cl clearly and quickly learn that we've made a wrong turn. A wrong turn. We ended up in a blind alley. And we hit a dead end. A block wall. Another problem. What we must understand is that we don't really have a work problem. I started off the series saying that. We don't really have a financial problem in your life. Pastor, if you look at my bank account, you know I have a financial problem. No, you don't. You don't really actually have a marriage problem or a problem with any other situation. Ultimately, what your issue is, what my issue is, what, what is our problem is that we lack wisdom. We lack the wisdom to be able to manage that part of our lives. We hit block wall after block wall, dead end, wasting precious life, precious minutes that we'll never get back, making yet another wrong turn in our marriage or making yet another wrong turn in our finances or in our relationship with our parents or with our family, right? Another, we just wasted time. We just sat at a stop sign for more than, than what we should have. Detour after detour, and the only solution is for us to have this wisdom, this wisdom-driven outlook. Uh, our outlook, our view on life has to be with, with the, the glasses of wisdom. We need to see it in a different way, not just count the one plus the one, but actually know where to put that. How to, how to use that in our lives. My, my daughters, you know, they hate math. I'm, I'm like a math nerd. I love math. I enjoyed math. My, both of my daughters are the complete opposite. They're more like their father in that. They hate math. And my daughter's theory is always this. Why? Like they're all like, why do they make us learn stuff we will never use in life, right? It's like, why do they make us learn these math problems? Like, why can't they just have us learn things that we need, things that we, we will use in daily life. And, and isn't that true, though? Aren't we that type of people that we're this generation where we want all the information, we want to know how to solve, but we, yet we don't know how to apply it? Like, you know it in theory, but you don't know where to use it. You come to church, we, we listen to word, we know that God, God's word gives life, and we're like, amen, amen, amen. But yet we go out and we walk in death. We walk in unforgiveness. We walk in resentment. Hey, we got to be a hot church, you guys. You know what a hot church is? Honest, open, and transparent. Come on, be hot this morning. Be hot. When you're hot, when you're, when you're, when you're honest, when you're open, when you're transparent, you're, you're going to say, yep, that's me. That's me. I'm the one that, that comes to church, and I know where the amens go. I know where the applauses go, but yet in my life, I don't know how to apply what I've been learning. And this is a thing. We need to be doers of the word. We need to know how to actually live out our faith. And we have to have this wisdom. we got to ask heaven itself for that wisdom, not only to provide us with the money, not only to provide us with the, with, with the, the spouse, but actually know how to love that person that God has given us. Give, he gives us money, but yet we don't know how to use the money. We don't know how to invest it. But God, in his word, leads us. And as Proverbs describes, it says this, be led. It says be led, guided on the straight path. 
if we hold on to instruction, if we hold tight to good advice, then the years of our life will be many. Tell your neighbor again, your years will be many. Yes, year, your years will be many, meaning that it not only are you going to have more years, but you're going to have more years of happiness. You know, who wants to live a long life? And it's like, you know, oh my gosh, it was agony the whole way through. Nobody wants that. But, you, but God wants you to have not only a long life, but an abundant life. John Maxwell said this. It said that a wise person learns from his mistakes. Yes? A wiser one learns from others' mistakes. But the wisest person of all learns from others' successes. Oh, I love this. Because I had always learned the first two. And they said, yes, it's true. A wise person will learn from their mistakes. There's people that, that are like dumb. Like they, they just keep on. Do, do you know? Don't raise your hand if you're one of them. Right? You keep on making the same mistakes. It's like you know that it's not the right thing, but yet we do it. Come on, be a hot church. Be a hot church. Can someone say amen to that? Oh, my gosh. But it's like. Not only should you learn from your mistakes, and it says a wiser one learns from the mistakes of others. You see somebody hit themselves, and you're like, okay, I'm not going to do that, right? I'm not going to do that. But the wisest of them all searches out people that are successful, searches out people that are going before, searches out people that are pioneering, people that are, that, that are succeeding in life and wants to learn from them. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the category of the wisest. I want to be in that category. I no longer just want to learn from my mistakes. I no longer just want to learn from your mistakes. I want to search out people that are going before me. I want to learn how to succeed, how to have that good marriage, how to have good finances, how to be a, 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 a whole person. I want to be led into this type of life, a beautiful family life, a thriving and successful business. I want to be the wisest. I want to be the wisest. How many wisest people came this morning? Yes? Wisest people. In order to have a wisdom-driven outlook, we must do two things, and I want to go quickly. Number one, we need to define your vision and your mission. Define my vision and my mission. What is this? I'm going to teach this morning, okay, you guys? So let's do it. Let's do it. You need to define your vision and your mission. I love this information because I so wish that I would have learned this. And I know that when you get old, you start saying those type of things, right? I wish I would have learned this when I was 15. When I, seriously, I wish I would have learned this back, back in the day. But now I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give you that wisdom so that you can apply it to your life. You need to define your vision and your mission. No person in their right mind would set out on a journey without looking at a map. If, they, if you don't know the way, no person in their right We even use a map now that we use the Siri or we use the Google Maps, right? Even to get home from wherever. Because we want the fastest, shortest way. We want efficiency, right, you guys? So it's like, how do I get home from the Starbucks? And you, there you go. And you, you've been home all the time, but you want to know where there's no access where this and that. So you want to be led. And we do that in a destination in your car, but yet in life, we're just going blind. We're just driving blind. We're, we're trying to, to live out a marriage, but yet we have no destination. There's no vision for it. There's no vision for your family. And we got to learn how to apply this. We got to learn how to put a vision, set out a goal for your family. Some people are just like, okay, well, whatever life brings, well, whatever life is going to bring is exactly that, whatever, right? If you aim for nothing, you're going to hit it every single time, nothing. And so the years pass and time passes, but yet you're in the same situation. Come on. You have to have that, that defining vision for your marriage, vision for your family, vision for your finances, vision for where you want to see yourself, where that X marks the, the spot on the map. It shows you where you're going to go. But most importantly, it doesn't just show you where you're going to go, but it's going to show you where you're not going to go. The knots. Like, like, we don't do that. 
like in our house, the Rodriguez's, mediocre, being mediocre is not, it's not, it's, it's just, we don't do it. We don't do it. You're going to either do it excellent or just don't do it. It's just something that we taught in our household. We taught that family, for us, family is first and we'll defend it. We will defend it. Like, do not mess with my family. Like, do not mess with us, right? And that's something we do. But, but many times you say, oh, that just comes naturally. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. You have to set out for that. You know, when I was in um, Argentina, this radio station called, and it's called pa to, From Pastor to Pastor, and they interviewed me. They wanted to interview the pastor's wife. And, and their question, it was so funny because, you know, the question I thought was comical. The question was this. So you went for ministry, and right now you guys are on a date, because we were on a date in, in Uruguay. We went on a date, and they're like, but we see on your Instagram you guys go on a lot of dates. And I'm like, yeah, like I didn't know they were. I'm like, you stalker, right? I was like, who is this person, right? Kind of creeped me out for a little bit, and they're like, so I was thinking, like, they were going to ask me, like, this big old question, right? Like, but what they wanted to know is why. And I said, they're like, I mean, do you guys just go? And I said, no. I'm like, these things are planned. These, because if this doesn't work, the church is not going to work. If this isn't good, if my family isn't good, I can't be the biggest hypocrite every Sunday and sit on the front row and say amen to something I, I, I don't agree with. That I'm not living Monday through Saturday. See? Success actually comes not in what the public sees, but what the public doesn't see. It's the private time in prayer. It's the private time in, in what you decide to do. And I said, it's not natural. It's planned. We've done this. We've actually sat down and said, we need time together. The Holy Spirit's talking to somebody this morning. Yeah. And it needs to be not only in the relationships. I'm using it as an example. But it needs to be in everything that you do in your life, in your business, as a family. You need to be intentional. I said, our date days or nights are intentional. We are intentionally going out. We are intentionally um, sowing seed because we want to protect the family. We said no matter what happens, this is going to thrive. We will protect it with everything that we have. So you need to be intentional. You need to mark your spot. You need to mark your ex. What is your ex? What is the vision for your home? What is the vision? If I ask you, what is the vision for your children? Oh, well, do you have a vision? That's the first problem, you guys. But, but I'm talking to you from the word of God, and it says you need to have this vision. So many people conduct their lives without a personal roadmap to success. Most people go through life seemingly wandering from one thing to the next. In Proverbs 29, 18, it says this. People perish without a vision. It's such a clear verse. People perish without without a vision. Do you have a vision? Do you have a vision for your marriage? Do you have a vision for your child? Do you have a vision for what your life is going to look like? This is true not only for our professional lives, but for our personal lives as well, for, for our family life. God designed us, God's vision for us. I said, Lord, when you made a me, like when I'm going through like a, a big struggle, I'm like, when you made me, I'm sure you did not design me to be this bitter woman, this hateful woman, this spiteful woman, this resentful person. I know that I was made for more than this. You know, and we're in situations, we're in situations where life has brought us things and you find yourself, come on, let's be a hot church, okay? Where you find yourself and you're like, wait a minute. I got to remind myself that God did not make me for this. 
God just did not make me to carry this bitterness. God did not make me to, to be this type of person. He made me for things greater than this. His plans for me are better than anything I can plan for myself. I was made to be a child of God. I was made to walk in the presence of God. I was made to walk into places and have his favor and his grace. Before I even open my mouth, there is a presence of God that opens a door that I could never even kick open. And I believe that for my life. Do you believe it for yours? Do you believe that God is on your side? Do you believe that, that he made you with that purpose, with that intention? If you do, then I say, then what is the vision? What vision, what, what, what purpose did he make you for? That's something only you can define. The vision expresses the way in which each person, every one of us, intends to fulfill the purpose. But why you, I'm sorry, you have to define what and the why before solving the how. Come on. you got to define the what and the why before solving the how. Many of us want to know the how, but we've never defined our what or our why. So we just go out doing life, and the enemy comes and, and, and puts, bombards us with problems, and we give up because we've never defined the why. When you have a strong why, why you're doing that, there's nothing that could move you from that. When I know why I'm faithful to one man, sometimes, you know, we have issues. We do. I mean, my husband is like, he'll say black and I'll say white. Like, that's how far we are, right, babe? And I, I look at him and I'm like, he's crazy. He's crazy. And I'm sure he looks at me and thinks like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? There's moments in life where, where I'm like, we are so opposite. We are so, so opposite. But in those moments of struggle, in those moments, I remember my why I'm in this. And I look at Nicole and I look at Isabella. And I look at his church. And I look at what God designed me to be on this earth. And then I fight for my marriage. Then I fight for my family. Because even though the what sometimes is hard, when you have a strong why, that gives you strength in times where you feel weak. Can someone say amen to that? Come on. Come on, church. The vision is given by God, but the mission is fulfilled by you. He'll give you the vision. Ask him to define it for your life. But the mission is your job. And the vision will only be obtained by focusing on the principles of God. By focusing on the word of God. There you go again, pastor. Yes, I don't have anything else. I, there, there's only one message here. Jesus. <laughs> like I could give you so many, so much good advice, but but. Ultimately, the answer to everything is Jesus. It is the word of God. That is the wisest advice I could ever give you. Go back to what the word says. Go to the word so the word will lead you. This includes the word in every aspect of our lives. Proverbs 3, 7 to 8 says this. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your bones and nourishment to your bones. I'm sorry, health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Proverbs 3, 5 to 8, the message version says this, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Look at the, your neighbor and say, trust God. Trust God. This is, this is something I know it's so easy and we hear this all the time, but, but I really feel in my heart that somebody needs to hear that. Let's just trust God. Look at, look at your neighbor and say, let's just trust God. Let's just trust God. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. The Bible says, listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you will know it all, you little know-it-all. Don't assume. Don't assume. Shh. Right? Shh. Run from evil. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. Fear the Lord and shun evil. 
Run to God and run from evil. This is stuff that this word is telling us. Together, not divided. Love, not hate. Forgiveness, not resentment. Health, not sickness. Run to God and run from evil. I don't know how much more simple we can hear the word of God this morning. Run to God and run from evil. This guarantees the success of your life. Did you know that? This. Run to God and run from evil. This guarantees success in your life. And second, I want to finish with this. Create good habits. So you got to divide your vision and your mission. And number two, you got to create good habits, you guys. We have to be people with good habits. Habits shape our character. And our character determines our destiny. Habits. We are all creatures of habit, whether good or bad or a big mixture of both, right? So some of us have a good habit and some of us, with, among those good habits, we have very many bad habits. But success of our mission has a lot to do with our daily routine. What does your day look like? What is your day in and day out? Not your Sunday's day. Not your Myra of Sunday, but the Myra of Monday, the Myra of Tuesday. What am I, what what type of habits am I forming in order for me to be in success? Day in and day out. It's not what you do that occasionally inspires others. It's what you do consistently. Not occasionally, not once in a while. It's not bringing mariachis when when you're trying to ask for forgiveness. It's loving every single day. It's being loving. It's being forgiving. It's walking out that in your daily lives. The little things that nobody sees are what produce the great results that everyone wants to have. What you see, what you see is not the result just because of whatever. It's just life, just Life was just good to us. No. You need to go find it out. You need to go and look for it. Search it out. Positive practices help us to become better at and better for our purpose. We each have this ability to choose what habits. When you get up in the morning, are you the one that never does the bed or do you make a bed? I don't want to, don't raise your hand. Right? Are you the one that always hits snooze, 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 snooze? Okay. Are you the one that lets the the clothes pile up and then you wash one day and you're like overwhelmed and in a bad mood because you have so much to wash? What I'm trying to get at is when you see the lives of successful people, they're usually people that do the things that need to be done in the moment that they need to be done. They get up. They do their bed. The alarm goes off, turn off, get up, do the bed, get up. This is our routine every morning. Put a washing machine. You're like, Pastor, I didn't come to church. This, this, is, this is real, you guys. This is real. God wants, God did not ha- give us the Bible to live just a manual in heaven. No, in heaven, everything's going to be perfect. It's a manual here on earth, how to deal with this life. And I'm telling you, a lot of times you're in a bad mood because you have nothing to wear because you haven't washed in a month. Okay? So when you don't, when you're not in the habit of being proactive, when you're not in that habit, then that produces bad things in your life and everything. You don't balance your checkbook because you'll just get to it later. You just procrastinate in everything and just want God just to rain glory upon you. But he can't. He can't. When we have a good habit, a good habit is a wonderful servant. But a bad habit is an awful master. And bad habits will want to dominate you. They'll want to keep you in bondage. Usually, the easier it is is for us to do something, the harder it is for us to stop doing it. If something's super easy for you, you're like, oh, this is easy, right? Like, don't raise your hand, but how many bite your, your fingernails? Right? Okay. It's so easy. It's just there. Right? I have the bad habits every time I get my nails done and, like, one breaks, and, like, I want to, like, rip them all off. And I love it. It's actually, like, it's satisfying to me. I'm being honest, you guys. Some of you guys, other things are satisfying. Hello? 
bad habits, the easier it is for you to do it, sometimes the harder it is for you to break them. Ay, 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 yes. There's a Spanish proverb that says this, habits are first cobwebs, then they become cables. So a habit begins as a cobweb, but later on, those are the chains that keep you prisoner. Most people live life cleaning up the cobwebs, playing catch up with things they procrastinated in doing, quickly cleaning up when you know that someone's coming over and they called you and you're like, ah, clean everything, they're coming because your house is like a mess. So everything gets poured into one of the rooms and then you close the door, okay, hello. Pulling an all-nighter to finish a project you were given a month ago, oh my gosh. Juicing to drop five pounds before you go to Cabo, Lord. <laughs> you know what? We all clean up cobwebs, but the cobwebs will keep on building unless you kill the spider. You guys, unless we kill that spider, the cobwebs are going to keep on building. So you can try to fix it. You can, you can bring down the cobwebs and clean it up and everything. Will, oh, it's so nice. But unless you deal with that spider, the cobwebs will be built again. And those cobwebs will become chains in your life. We gotta, there's things we got to kill in our lives. Now, don't kill your spouse, okay? He's not the spider. She's not the spider. Look, and you're just like, you're not the spider. You're not the spider. No. But the way you're dealing with things, the resentments, those issues, all of that is the spider. we got to kill it. Los Angeles Dodgers manager Tommy Lasorda described his battle with bad habits as this. He said, I took a pack of cigarettes from my pocket, stared at it, and said, who's stronger, you or me? This is, this is what he said. And he said, the answer was me. So I stopped smoking. Then I took a vodka martini and said to it, vodka martini, who's stronger, you or me? And the answer was me. And I stopped drinking. And everybody's like, yeah. Then I went on a diet. And I took a big plate of linguine with clam sauce and said, who's stronger, you or me? And the little clam looked up at me and said, me, I'm stronger. And I ate the whole bowl, right? <laughs> First, we form habits. But then our habits are going to form us. So I, our actions create results. And if you don't like the results in your life, church, change your actions. Ask God to change your heart. Ask God to, to change those issues, to, to bring healing to your heart. Not just to clean up the cobwebs. Don't just clean up this issue. Don't just resolve this, right? But actually, let's, let's kill that, that that's dividing us, that's dividing in our family. Wait a minute, what's going on here? And usually, Gregory, it's a symptom of the same divorce. Because since we're taught that, we're taught it doesn't work, divorce. Uh, our relationship not working, separation. Um, I don't like you, so I don't talk. You know, delete, unfriend. We're taught that. So then those are the cobwebs we're looking at, but we got to kill that spider. No, we're family. Uh-uh, we're family. And family's first, and this is, we're going to be together. We are going to be together. Amen. So we're going to kill those spiders. Yes, come on. So Proverbs 4 motivates us to hold tight to good advice. Don't relax your grip. Guard it well. Your life is at stake. Therefore, today is a very special day, church. It's the opportunity for you to make that good decision. It's the opportunity for you to say, I want to change the outcome. I want to have a clear vision. I want my family to be on that mission to success. I don't want to just give room to be in mediocre or, or make room for whatever life will bring. No, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. We're people of excellence. We're people with a vision. We're people that, that stay together. If we leave our life to possibility, the possibility is that we're going to fail. Don't leave your life to possibility. The only thing sure in our life is Jesus. I know I'm not sure. One day I have one opinion, the next day I change. Like one day I like something, I'll buy things, and then I'll look in my closet and say, who, who bought this? This is so ugly, 
right? Right? We're, we're just people, we're, we're not sure. We're, we're so human. We're so human. But the only sure thing is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So I don't come to bring you, and I, and I know that I, I'm teaching a lot on, on wisdom, but this is all from the Bible, you guys. I'm just cutting it down to, to chewable pieces, right? But this is all from the Bible. And sometimes I find myself talking to a person and, and trying to be there for them, right? And they're, and they're telling me all about their cobwebs. They're telling me about how awful this cobweb and this is happening and this dust over here in my life and all these and this is overwhelming and they're overwhelmed by the cobwebs and they want me to tell them how to solve the cobwebs when the whole time the issue is the spider. The issue, there's a root to what you're seeing as a cobweb in your life. There's a root that you need to allow Jesus Christ, his presence to heal in your heart. There's a root sometimes of, of you know, d- of division, of being divisive. Sometimes there, there's a root where, where you always feel victim. You always feel victim. You always feel less than everybody else. You feel like everybody thinks less of you, so you're always the outcast. You're always not the chosen one. You're always... That, that, those are all cobwebs, but there's a root there. And we have to come to God this morning. We have to come to Him and let Him heal our hearts. Amen? Why don't you stand to your feet? You know, during this whole wisdom series, Lord knows that I've I've been asking God for, for wisdom in my life for a lot of things. 40 years have already passed, and I'm thinking, you know, is half of my life already over? What have I accomplished? And then I look at everything. I said, Lord, show me where we're going. Show me. I need, I need to know. I need to have your, your vision for my life. I no longer want to tell you where I want to go. I, and I feel like that's the biggest wisdom that I've learned this year. I used to tell God where it was I was going, you know, and say, this is where I'm heading. Come with me. I need you to bless me, which is, which is awesome. He will. He will. But, but right now in my life, I'm kind of at this moment, me personally. I don't know about you, but me personally. I'm in a moment in my life where, where I've seen, and I'm so grateful to God for what he's done. But I'm like, Lord, you know, you tell me. You tell me. I already know what I could do. And that's just natural. That's just natural. That's with my giftings or, or with, but Lord, I, I want you to tell me now. I want you to lead me. I want to do what you want me to do. I want to, I want to live out the vision that you have for my life. And he'll do that for you. But you've got to stop holding on to your opinion. you got to let go and let God. Let go and let God. So there in your spot, before we sing, I just want to pray for you you have somebody that you know next to you, if you have your spouse next to you or a friend, take hold of their hand. I know for some people it's uncomfortable, but if it's comfortable for you, take hold of their hand. Because something specific in the Word of God said, be led. Be led. Heavenly Father, I just ask you, I come before you with a humble heart have these ears but now I want to hear I want to listen I want to listen to the direction that you have for our lives each and every one of us and today we take hold of your hand we want to be led we know that sometimes we make the worst decisions sometimes we've made the worst mistakes but today we come before you and we ask you to lead us. You lead the way. Let your word be lamp unto our feet. Light up the path that we need to take, Lord. This morning, let it not just be more information, but let it be life transformation in our, in, in our everyday being. Heavenly Father, lead your church. 
that you not just be another idea, but be their savior, be their king, be their father, be their way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hemos podido escuchar, nos hemos humillado para cumplir hoy tu voluntad. 